welcome to the Flycraft Guideboat Assembly video. You will need a few tools to complete this job. A Phillips number two screwdriver, a 532nd Allen key, two 7 16 inch wrenches, one 3 8 inch wrench. An impact drill is nice, but not necessary. First things first, find a good open area like your garage to lay out the pieces as seen here. Do not drag your boat on concrete, especially when the boat isn't inflated. Starting at the front of the frame, use the included grease to lubricate both male and female ends of the pieces. There is a bolt hole on the front seat mounting bar. Make sure that it is located on the left of the craft facing rearward. This is used for mounting the optional rod holder. When putting the larger pieces together, take your time and go slow, making sure they are going together evenly. After the front seat bar, you'll continue moving rearward, lubing and connecting all the pieces together. Do not install any of the bolts yet. When installing the two rear Z pieces, pay close attention to the orientation to make sure you have them correct. The piece with the anchor rope running through it goes on the right side. Ensure that the longer end of the left side Z piece is facing the front of the craft. Installing the rear U-bar, you'll notice that it is wider than the Z-pieces it connects to. Don't worry, it's supposed to be. With both Z-pieces connected to the rower seat piece, raising and rotating the rear ends of the Z-pieces will allow them to connect to the U-bar. This makes the frame rise up in the rear. Now your entire frame should be connected and look like this, dog not included. Go through and install all the frame hardware, but do not tighten them down. Install all bolts loosely first. There will be 18 total bolts located as shown. There are four bolt holes where the ore arms mount. This is so the ore arms can be adjusted to the position that works best for you. Leave these open for now. We'll come back to them later. Continue through the frame and install the hardware. Remember, loosely. Make sure when installing the frame hardware that the anchor rope is loose. This ensures that it doesn't get bound up in the bolts. If the rope goes under one bolt and over another, this will cause the anchor to not work properly. After all the bolts have been installed, you can tighten them down. Once the frame bolts are all tight, you can install the ore arms. Find the location that feels best for you and install with the three bolts. Most people find mounting the ore arms right behind the frame connection point, as seen here, is comfortable for most people of all sizes. The next most popular spot is over the frame connection point. Remember, not only are the ore arms adjustable, but the seat can be slid forwards or backwards to fine tune your rowing position. The shorter of the three bolts will go in the forward most hole, closest to the front of the boat. Tighten the bolts and repeat on the other side. Make sure that the ore arms are facing the correct way, as shown here with the angle cut facing forward. Next is the rear seat mounting plate. Line up the mounting holes, install the bolts, and tighten. Push the swivel against the ground to rotate so you have access to the mounting slots. We find that on the guide boat, most people are not removing the seats very often, so we usually mount the seat swivels directly to the frame. 
align the swivel on the seat, and install the included screws. Get all four screws started and then tighten them down after. Be careful with these screws as they can strip the plastic if tightened too much. With the swivel installed, place the four bolts with washers through the swivel and align it on the front seat mounting bar. Install the washers and nuts on the bolts, then tighten. Repeat this process for the rower seat and the rear angler seat. If you prefer to use the seat quick releases, instead of mounting the swivel to the frame, mount the quick release brackets as seen here. Make sure the open side with the lever is facing forward. Once the seat quick release is installed, you slide the seat swivel into the quick release bracket. Keep in mind, although the swivels look perfectly square, they are slightly rectangular. So if it is not going in easy, just rotate the swivel 90 degrees and it will slide in. The rower seat is adjustable, so insert the bolts and slide it into your desired position. Make sure the large area washers are installed on the underside of the mounting rails. Install the rear seat to the mounting plate with the washers and nuts on the bottom. We'll now install the front and rear lean bars. Two short bolts for the bars, longer bolts for the upper leg locks. Install the lean bars with the angled section at the top as seen here. Tighten the lower bolts and then install the upper leg lock. Align the holes and rotate to insert. Before pushing it all the way down into position, take the longer bolts and insert them with the bolt head facing inboard. While applying a little pressure to the bolt head, tap the top of the leg lock to slowly push it into place. Once the holes of the leg lock and the lean bars line up, the bolt should push right through. Install the nuts and tighten each side. The process is the exact same for the rear lean bar. Just make sure you have the lean bars installed with the angled section at the top as seen here. Getting the bolt in place and tapping the leg lock down can be tricky. If it's not lining up, try loosening the lower bolts and trying again. Next up is inflating the raft. Open the valve covers, press the internal valve and rotate a quarter turn to the right. This allows air in but not out. A quarter turn to the left allows air to flow in and out freely. Have the valve turn to the right when inflating the raft. Keep in mind, the cap is not what keeps air in the valve. It is only to protect the valve mechanism from dirt. Inflate the raft tubes to 0.3 bar. Please watch our Boat Care with Brandon video for more information about air pressure and how to regulate it for temperature changes. We will link that video in the description. Install the drop stitch floor in the base of the raft. Make sure the floor's valve is at the rear of the raft. Make sure the floor is completely underneath the front D-ring. Inflate the floor to 0.5 bar. With the raft inflated, you can place the frame in position with the front of the frame pushed up to the bow of the craft. Install the frame to the raft with the included cam straps. The short one is for the front. When installing the straps, there will be three on each side. Install all the straps on one side and leave them loose. Feed the straps through the buckle with the buckle facing downwards. Take up all the slack of the strap, but don't crank them down or the frame will be off center. 
we like to loop the tail end of the strap back through the cam buckle for a cleaner setup. Once you have both sides loosely strapped and the frame is centered, you can tighten the straps. You don't need a lot of force to secure the frame. If you didn't get the optional gear rack, secure the frame directly to the rear D-ring with the two straps as seen here. For those with the gear rack, place the rack on the frame first, aligning the slots with the frame bars. Thread the rear straps up through the gear rack slots and tighten them to the rear D-ring. The short straps will attach the front of the rack directly to the frame. Take the anchor pulley, rotate the face plates, and slide it onto the anchor rope. Attach the quick link to keep the pulley on the rope. This is also where you will attach the anchor. Installing the motor mount, you will only use the three vertical bolts on the guide model. Slot the motor mount on the frame. Install the bolts with the threads for the nuts on the bottom. Last thing is to drop the ore locks into place and secure them with the lock ring. We hope this video was helpful in getting your new raft all ready for the water. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to leave a comment below or reach out to our customer service team at cs at flycraftusa.com.